Hey everybody, I hope you're having a kick-ass evening. So I'm doing another video uh, per a email I got and I'm just gonna kind of give you an overview basically. Hey Dag, I've seen a lot of videos lately of people taking off with the ailerons reversed and crashing their airplanes. I'm not sure how this could happen. Two things, one, could you explain if it's ever happened to you? And two, the second one would be, can you tell us how to prevent that from ever happening? So I'm gonna dive into this. If you're brand new to my channel, um, basically my nickname is dag and from the late 70s up until now i've been obsessed with model aircraft for the last 11 or 12 years i've been obsessed with what i call ginormous aircraft uh, radio control electric aircraft which is 150 inches and bigger and the plane i'm flying right now is 188 inches 60 pounds it's the yellow and blue airplane called the msl2 it's a kick-ass airplane but the reason i have this youtube channel is to share with you my success and sometimes my failures I don't like to talk like in hearsay or, or second person. I don't like to speculate. I like to only share with you what I've had success with so you could possibly use that to have success in model aviation, okay? So um, it's just really important that you understand if you're watching my channel, 99.9% .9 of what I'm telling you is things I've actually done, okay? I'm just trying to help people have success in model aviation. So with that said, I do want to give a shout out real quick to my sponsor, RTL Fasteners. Any of the bolts, nuts, blind nuts, nylocks, Allen heads, uh, Phillips head, uh, servo screws, metric standard, any of that junk you need, if you go to their website, wrtlfasteners.com, uh, and buy more than $50 of product and use code DA30, you'll get 30% off that. And they have some really neat hardware, or fasteners as we like to put it. So this is a horrible situation to be in here. You take off, the plane starts to roll over, and you're just like, oh my God, it's not doing what I'm commanding it to do. This has happened to me twice in my life. One time was with the little hand launch park flying foamy thing that I just thought it was ready to go. <clears throat> I cycled everything, looked at it, didn't really even think. It didn't hurt it, landed in the grass. The other one could have been a disaster, and it was back in like 1992, I think, or theory that this happened. Um, I had a plane called the Midwest Sukhoi, and Midwest was a manufacturer that made kits, and it was a Sukhoi 40. It was made for a 40 size engine, and I think it had a 54 or 56 inch wing. It was a little bitty, pretty kick ass airplane. If you don't know what a Su it's a Sukhoi 26, too, if I didn't say that. The Sukhoi 26 was uh, a Russian aerobatic airplane, single seat. Okay, the Su-29 or the Sukhoi-29 was a two-seat, not Su, that's a fighter jet. But the Sukhoi-29 was a two-seat version, I think, that became the Sukhoi-30. But the Sukhoi-26 was a single seat. So I'd flown it for the whole summer and had a really kick-ass time flying it. And like I always do, I get a little bit bored. And it was a very aerobatic airplane, but I had a KMB-65 Sportster, which is a big honking, but very light engine. So the KMB Sportster was built without any piston rings. It didn't even, I don't think, it, I don't even know if it had a sleeve in it. The, the engine weighed virtually nothing. You could fly it for two years and then you'd probably just throw it away because it wouldn't hold any compression. I mean, this airplane had virtually no compression when you went to start it. It's when it heated up that the cylinder expanded and things got tight and you actually had good power out of the engine. Why well, stuck one of those on my Sukhoi, which was like turbocharging the airplane. It was the first airplane um, once, once I got past this first test flight, I could do a knife edge loop with, and this was back in the early nineties, but on the, the re-maiden flight, I had gone from what was called a Futaba attack four, which is a four channel Futaba radio back in the nineties to a Airtronic six channel on the Airtronic six channel though, to reverse servos, you had a little bitty door in the back that you'd fold down and you could flip toggle switches. And I think there's something subliminal about when we look at the radio and we look at our ailerons, that when we say out loud, left is left, right is right, and we hear that word right, I think we're telling ourselves that the airplane's right. Because I had one of my friends stand with me and I just did a real quick, I always cycle all of my flying surfaces before I ever taxi, just to make sure nothing's come unplugged. Because one time I did taxi out and I moved my ailerons, they didn't move because I forgot to plug in my ailerons when I put the wing on, okay? 
But this airplane had the ailerons backwards. I had no idea. The thing that saved me on this is that I knew this airplane was turning a 13 uh, 8 prop, normally turned like a 10 6. So I had this big old honking master air screw propeller on the front of this little bitty airplane with a big old motor. I was just going to show off, kind of be the, the, the dumbass and go vertical with it and just going to do barrel rolls going vertical with it because I'd already flown the plane. I just upgraded the engine, right? Well, I changed radios and that's where that gotcha moment got me. So I roll maybe five feet down our little paved runway. I pull it vertical and right as you start to go straight up, I start doing these big corkscrews. And the reason they were corkscrews is I, and this sounds arrogant, but I'm a really good rudder pilot. And I always use a little bit of rudder in every maneuver I'm doing. So I kind of had a cross control. The ailerons were going right where I was commanding both my thumbs to go left. So this big corkscrew, and I yelled real loud, I don't have it. But then I noticed that my, um, I pulled the throttle back and I heard the throttle come back. And I pulled the, um, I pulled the throttle back and I moved my elevator. And the plane moved. And I yelled, my ailerons are jammed. So I went right back to full throttle because I'm going straight up and then I let off the ailerons and it quit rolling. And then it just hit me and I did. I said, I said, my ailerons are reversed. Well, my buddy wanted to open up the door on the back of my radio and, and flip the aileron. I said, no, 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 don't touch anything. And I'll tell you why that in a minute. But long story short, I landed the airplane. I did cartwheel it when I landed, but I landed it using rudder. If you're a RC model airplane pilot, you got to learn to fly rudder, folks. Um, if you're ever going to get into helicopters, it's going to be a ginormous help for you, knowing how to use that left hand. Um, I've seen people who fly scale champion planes that don't know how to use rudder very good. If you've ever watched me in a crosswind, you'll look and say, oh my gosh, Dag is like James Bond with the rudder. <laughs> I'm kind of kidding. But I love using the rudder when I fly. Okay, So... We always wonder, how could somebody take off with the ailerons reversed? Well, mine was out of being hasty. On my giant scale airplanes, I actually have a pre-flight checklist where I, before I fly, each time I set it up at a flying field, I will go through my pre-flight checklist. I'll actually do that every morning of the day I'm going to fly if the plane's already assembled. I got a pre-flight checklist for my giant airplanes. Um, now, my giant airplanes are over 55 pounds, so I have to be part of the AMA a uh, large model aircraft uh, program. And by those rules, I'm supposed to have my own pre-flight checklist with the plane anyway. Okay, but I keep it for my smaller airplanes too. But when we, when we, when we think of our aircraft and our ailerons and our rudders and our, and our elevators, something really interesting about the rudder, I think as kids, we know which way a rudder moves because we might've played with boats or we just understand that a rudder is going to turn a plane a certain direction. The elevator, we just know when it comes up, it's going to push the tail down. But for some reason with ailerons, we look at that and I noticed something interesting that there are some pilots out there that learn to fly on a trainer and the instructor never really told them what the ailerons were doing except when they go this way, you go right. When you go this way, they go left. When you pull back on the stick, you go up. And when you use the rudder, that's how you steer on the ground. I've taught about 101 people how to fly model airplanes. I spend a lot of time in, with what I call flight school. I teach them aerodynamically what ailerons do. So when we think about looking at the back of an airplane, we see the ailerons move and we're like, okay, most of us understand what they're going to do. But are we really verifying they're doing what the stick's doing? Okay, you see it move the other direction. Now, this is an FW190 that uh, I've kind of mirrored. This is a DAS 3D model because I do I use DAS 3D for all of my illustrations in, in my training for my career. And I also use it for my aviation model airplane um, teaching. But if you look at the throws of this FW190, which is mirroring one of my friend's airplanes, and then you look at a P40 and you look at these throws, there's hardly any throws there. So one of my friends who flies a P40, he only has 12 degrees of movement of his ailerons because he wants to fly super scale. He hates twitchy airplanes when he flies scale. Okay, so when he checks that, 
and he doesn't see them move much because I know one time I watched him cycle his ailerons. I go, I'm like, good Lord, those don't move much. And he goes, yeah, and actually it was a bitch. I almost took off with the reverse because of that. And I asked him, I said, how did you do that? He goes, well, my flaps were down. I looked at everything and it wasn't until I really took my time. So he mentioned something to me that then I kind of realized. When we say right is right, left is left, and we're saying that right word, I wouldn't say it out loud because you're telling yourself you're right. What I do is, and I'll, I'll show you at the end a little trick I do to make sure mine are right. I will normally hand the radio to somebody else and say, hey, do all my controls look correct? And they'll move them around and they'll go, yep, left and right is good, you're good to go. But when I hold my radio and I say to somebody, hey, right is right, left is left, I've seen people do this where they all say the plane's good. So what I want to do is I want to describe for you a situation that happened with one of my friends. Um, and it was devastating. He built a Royal, I can't remember what the airplane was nowadays. I mean, this was back in like 94, 95. Um, it, I think it was a Corsair. I don't remember if Royal aircraft made a Corsair, but I think this was a Corsair. But I got to the club. He had already set it up. He had already run it. They had already tuned the carb. Him and three other people had looked over the airplane and I was setting up my airplanes, which I had a, uh, I was flying my uh, Goldberg Chipmunk and my Aeromaster 60 and I had three or four airplanes. I see him go down the run and we lift in the air and he rolled right on his back and just destroyed this beautiful airplane. Basically broke everything from the front of the wing off the front of the airplane. The rest of the airplane was there and I always joked with him, you could rebuild this, but he was so devastated he said, I'm just going to throw it in a dumpster. But I said, well, we got to figure out what went wrong. He goes, I just lost the radio when it took off. We plugged everything in and the ailerons were reversed. Now, this guy had flown for about two years. He had learned on a trainer, moved into a low wing trainer, moved into a, uh, I can't remember the name of the Mustang, but it was a 40 size Mustang. The gear didn't go up and down. Didn't even have flaps, but it was a Mustang P51. He'd flown that and gotten really good with it. But in his mind, when he looked at the ailerons, he didn't understand aerodynamically what ailerons do. He may still be watching this today. Okay, we're still kind of, well, we're good friends, but we our paths cross once in a while. And he was so embarrassed, and I'm not trying to embarrass him. I'm trying to use this to educate people with what happened, okay? But he thought when the aileron went down, that means that was the wing that went down. Okay, we all know that when the aileron goes down, the wing lifts. In his mind, because nobody had ever taught him, he thought he had the ailerons set up. But what was funny, or not funny, it's more, it's sad, is he had three other people with him, or four, and he said, up, down, rudder left, right, ailerons right, ailerons left, and everybody agreed, they just nodded their head. This same thing happened to another good friend of mine that built a Byron um, P40, I think it was. Built it for a client. They went out to test fly it. Three people checked it out. He took it off and rolled it on its back. And he says, Damon, I swear to you that those ailerons were right. All of us saw that they were right. So something's triggering our minds to believe what we're seeing is right. Okay, there's that word right again. And we think right aileron. And I'm just... I'm hypothesizing here a little bit, but here's the trick I always use to make sure my ailerons are working right. Keep in mind, most of them when I build an airplane, it takes three years to build a ginormous scale airplane. That last month seems like it's 90% of the work, but it's me making sure that all the flying surfaces work right, that everything is bulletproof in the airplane. But I fictitiously imagine putting a styrofoam block under the aileron, and when I move my stick to the left, the airplane leans to the left because the aileron's doing a push-up. <laughs> okay, you could do this with a real piece of foam. You could do this with a real cardboard box. You could do it with soda can. If the plane's big, you might get a miniature tripod. But if you put something under that aileron and you move your stick to the left, the airplane should tilt left. If you put the box under the other aileron and you move your stick to the right, the plane should stick to your right. But I'm a very 3D person because I design in 3D. So when I visualize that box under the wing and I move my stick to the left, and I imagine the plane moving to the left, I know I've got that right, okay? But here's another thing I want you to think of. 
when we're watching an airplane sit on the ground, and this happened to, and th I remember this as clear as if it was yesterday. A friend of mine built a beautiful, and I don't know whose kit it was, but it was a FW-190. Uh, the paint job wasn't this, it was the winter paint job. But he had his flaps down for takeoff. He stood there by himself with the engine idling, and he says, hey, do you want to be my spotter? And I said, yeah, and I stood next to him, and I said, you've checked everything out. He's like, yep. He's like, the uh, gear works, the air cylinders, uh, I mean, the air canisters are, are at 110 PSI, the engine idles great, the CG's perfect, everything's right, I'm ready to go. And I said, okay, I said, you know, do your ailerons real quick, do your elevators. He said, elevator, and I said, man, that's a lot of throw, and he goes, oh, I'll be fine. He gave the rudder, I said, perfect, and then he said, Aileron's right, aileron's left. And I looked at him for a minute, and I imagined my cube under that aileron. I go, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I said, act like you're doing a left turn. He moves his stick to the left, and the ailerons were going right. I said, dude, your ailerons are backwards. He goes, no, they're not. Watch. And he goes, you know, this, this. I said, no, the aileron that drops is the one that raises the wing. He goes, I... And then he just froze, and I tell you, he turned white as a sheet. This guy spent so much time on the rivets and the cockpit and everything in that airplane that he's getting ready to take off with the freaking ailerons reversed. Okay, now, when you think about this airplane, I think when those flaps were down and he looked at things, I, I'm not sure what goes through your brain when you see your ailerons going one direction, but in your brain you think they're going the right. And this guy is a full-scale pilot. This guy knows what ailerons do. And he almost took off with the ailerons reversed. And it was the craziest things. Now, nowadays, I never see this because I don't fly that much. I only fly about a dozen times a year because I'm building. I've got my life, my career. I go to a, two fly-ins a year sometimes. But back in the 90s, I was flying on Tuesday nights, Thursday nights, Saturdays, and Sundays. Might be one reason I got a divorce. <laughs> but, but I was flying all the time. And people were always bringing airplanes to me to test fly or check out. And I'm tr I tried to remember before I made this video how many times I've seen planes take off with the, with the ailerons reversed. I've seen one of my own that I saved, one of my own that I crashed, which was my little park flyer. didn't hurt it. I saw my buddy with his 190, um, I'm sorry, with his Corsair, his Royal Corsair, roll over and crash. Um... I saw a guy that to this date still swears it was his radio. But when we plugged everything back in, the ailerons were reversed. And he says, nope, they were fine when I took off. Somehow this radio reversed them. I'm never going to buy another Futaba radio ever. You can't fix that, okay? I mean, and if he's watching this, I still think you're wrong, okay? I mean, we're allowed to have distance, difference of opinions. But I don't think there's any way in the world that a programmable radio flipped your servos uh, between the time that you taxied out and the time you crashed and stayed flipped. Maybe it's happened. Maybe somebody can, in the comments, tell me, oh, no, Dag, in 1996, you know, half the Futaba radios were doing that. I don't remember it. But um, when, you, when you look at your airplane and you see these flying surfaces moving around, you, you, need, you need to take a step back and imagine aerodynamically what's happening, Okay. Um, I know a friend one time that trimmed an elevator with his flaps. Most of the times, flaps will cause your plane to balloon up. You'll give one or two degrees of down elevator. When he dumped his flaps, his elevator went up like 15 degrees. And I said, is that for like aerobatics? He goes, no, that's a trim I needed for my flaps. And I said, have you been tweaking this in the air? He goes, no, this is what people told me to set. And I said, exactly what they'd say. They said, they said I need to set the airplane for when the nose blooms up. I need to set my elevator. I said, well, if it balloons up, wouldn't you want down elevator? And he goes, yeah, I guess I would. And I said, you know, we should just fly and see what it does. And it was hilarious. We took off with no flaps. We got it up high. He flipped his flap switch down. When the flaps came down, this plane did just beautiful inside loops. <laughs> I mean, and he goes, maybe I should leave that because this loops looks better than the loops I fly. But look, folks, all I'm trying to get across to you is... um. Don't be in a hurry, okay? Let, let's. I I spend three years on most of my projects, so that last month is like trying to pass a kidney stone. It is like 
half the crap I'm trying to get done is not fitting. When you're fin, I mean, I always say that 90% of the hardest work on a model is the last 10% of getting it done. Because now you've got to make it an airworthy airplane. That other 90% of your time was bench flying it. Imagine it being up in the air. Imagine that you're flying formation. You know, imagine that Chuck Yeager comes back and stand next to you and pats you on the back. I don't know what the hell your fantasy is. But the, when you get into that last 10% of building that airplane, that's when you got to really focus to make sure CG's right, the gear right works, and it doesn't jam. But you got to make sure your ailerons are right. And, you, you, and you've got to know the moment your airplane's starting to do something that you're not ready for, what are you going to do? I don't think I would be fast enough. Even in the days where I was completely loaded up on Mountain Dew, that I would be able to react quick enough to a scale warbird that isn't overpowered. Keep in mind, my Sukhoi had like a three to one thrust ratio. That's the reason I saved that airplane. If I was taking off a scale warbird that had the proper wing loading, the proper power loading, and I lifted off the ground and it started to roll, my first reaction is, okay, the wind. I'm just gonna cram over that stick harder. Now my roll is gonna start speeding up. I would most likely be almost inverted when I'd realize I've got a problem. Now, if you're a really good pilot, you give it down elevator and start flying out of it inverted. But these are seconds and milliseconds, folks. So it's much better to verify on the ground your ailerons are right than to ever think you're going to fly an airplane with the ailerons reversed. I know two or three people that have saved the airplane by flying out inverted and then landed on rudder. Um, actually, I should just, I know two people that have done that. I shouldn't say two or three. I know two people personally that did that. Okay, and there were witnesses. <laughs> but most of the time, you're just going to slow roll over and crash, and you're just going to keep bending that stick, thinking that you'll find enough aileron once the airspeed gets up or something. Um, but rarely are you going to be able to survive having an aileron servo reversed, okay, or the channel reversed. So look, I'm going to shut down this video, everybody. Um, you know I always end my videos in a little editorial about getting kids flying. Kids that are sitting on video games, driving 68 Camaros through a crowded street, killing people and busting the windshield is not the, the greatest way to make them a functioning part of society in the future. But you get them into model aviation. They learn science. They learn physics. They learn how to build with their hands. They learn the joy and accomplishments of mastering flight. They learn how to deal with the dickheads and Karens out there that are the know-it-alls that tell them if they fly FPV, they're losers, or they fly quads, they're losers. They learn how to deal with these idiots. Um, one of the most important goals I've got the last 20 years or 30 years I'm going to live and in, in, in fly in model aviation is getting six years old and ups involved in model aviation. Get them a Gillis glider. Get them a rubber-powered airplane. Get them a little two-channel where you just got throttle and rudder. I've actually still got one of those. I used to teach people how to fly. Um, it's just really important that we keep the youth in model aviation. I've been around so long that I remember everybody hating helicopters and gliders. So people are out there that just have to hate. Now they want to hate FPV and quads. Um, whatever comes next will be great because then they can hate that and they won't hate the FPV and quads. So I'm waiting for the next neat thing. Maybe it's Hindenburgs. Maybe it's dirigibles. You know, something that somebody just floats down the middle of the runway at two miles an hour for a half hour and just pisses everybody off. But... Right now, we, we can't have that hate. We can't have the jerks. We just got to get the youth into, our, into, into model aviation, folks, okay? So have a stellar night. Have an awesome night. Rock on. Please like and subscribe and share my videos. Believe it or not, the little bit of money I make off my YouTube is helping me do future uh, projects. I mean, if you guys could share my videos like 15 million times, I probably could afford to build the B-36, the C-130, the Mosquito, the T-28. I have like 20 airplanes. I'm still going to build my big B-47 before I die. I mean, I've got a 230-inch design for a B-47 that I am going to get done and fly. Plain and simple. But I've got to live long enough, and I've got to have the money to do it. So please share my videos. <laughs> Rock on, everybody. Have an awesome night, and I'll see you next time. Take a kid flying. Be safe. Bye-bye.